called Believe and Repent. We are still in the process of understanding um, why it's important for our belief system to, to get stronger, but also what that leads us to do. So today, I wanted us to see that our faith and our belief in God is something that doesn't just come and that's all. It, it comes with us needing to know that there's action behind uh, what we believe in. And so we're going to be reading through some scriptures today on understanding what God has called us to do once we understand that He is our God. When we accept Christ as our Savior, what does that lead us to? Does it lead us to just coming and being stagnant and saying, okay, well, I, I, I got it, I believed it, that's all that needs to happen, and I can kind of move on, and I, I can just say if people ask me, you know, do you believe in God? Yeah, I believe in God, but then I still go on and do what I do. Does that really show a committed belief or faith that you know and trust and understand who God is for you? Now, I want to give a preface to this, because we're going to talk about doubt a little bit later, uh, not today, but sometimes we might think that if I have doubt in God, or my, and I question my faith sometimes, does that mean that I don't believe and I'm struggling? Well, you know, sometimes doubt helps us to build upon what our faith is, depending on where that's going. So we're going to talk about that in a couple of weeks. So I want to let you know, when we're talking about belief and how that leads to action, sometimes it's a roller coaster. It's not always like I believe in God and then it just takes off to the stratosphere and everything just gets better and better and I just, I just automatically trust everything. And I automatically just believe and know that everything is going to be good. We go through a process of learning. Just like if you're in a relationship with somebody, uh, the first person you ever thought you, you know, might have liked enough to date, you didn't immediately go, so we're going to get married tomorrow? Let's just get married tomorrow and everything's just going to work out. It's going to be perfect. I don't need to like question why you like uh, certain things or why you choose so loud. Or, I don't need to do any of this stuff. I just want to, you know, we're going to get married. Everything's going to be perfect. I'm going to trust them. That would be awesome that that could happen. But usually there's a, a lot of learning. And sometimes it's humility on our end to know that we have to sacrifice and give some things up in the process too. And the same is with God. He gives us all the information. He loves us unconditionally. He has continually being faithful even when we aren't. But it's our process of learning that God is consistent, that he shows up, that he's the same God as he was yesterday, as he is today, that he will be tomorrow. And as broken humans, that trust has been broken so much in us that sometimes we're just waiting for the carpet to get pulled out from under us, or rug. Carpet would be harder than a rug. <laughs> to get pulled out from under you because you've been burned before, and why wouldn't God burn you like everybody else? If that's part of your world and part of your bag, if that's okay, if it's normal, but let's work through that together uh, as we get through the series. So today we're going to look at a few different verses, and today we're going to be talking about faith and action. And... With everything, um, I think we need to, to look at it as a mindset of, when I learn something, if I do nothing with what I've learned, what was the point of me learning it? We have some people in here that have some pretty like, important jobs that take care of people in different ways. Could you imagine if you were somebody who, uh, let's say, maybe works on people's brains when you were here? Well, I don't know, we might have one of those, I don't know. Let's say you learned all this stuff, and you decided, you know what, that was good and all, but I think I'm just going to do it my way, because what I think might be better is if I just tweak this part of the brain more, they'll be nicer. I don't know what it is, but no, we don't do that. We, we, we take what you learn, you put it into practice, and you get better at it. And our journey of faith is the same way. As we study the gospel, as we learn about who Jesus is in our life, about what God is consistently doing for us over and over again, we are building in us some knowledge, but that knowledge has to come with some form of action that we're using it for him. Or why would we be here? What would our purpose be? Or what does God have for us? So we're going to look at what that looks like. We're going to start the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. This lets us know that what faith is, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing of Hebrews 11, but you can. It's the whole chapter about what people did with their faith, these great cloud of witnesses that was before us that showed us some different things. <laughs> Hebrews 11 chapter 1 tells us what faith is. It says, faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. So I want you to know that there's going to be a list of a whole bunch of people and what their faith did. 
And I want you to know, like, there are going to be people who are going to look at you, hopefully one day, and say, by faith, Mike did this. By faith, Gavin did this. Because there are people who are looking at you as a continuation of what they are going to know what the Bible is, because they might not read the Bible until after they even know who you are. And you might have been their witness. You might be their great cloud of witnesses. But because of you, or for me in my life, my mom, and for my mom it was her great-grandparents who showed her what being a Christian was about. She looked at them, and there's other people in my life that were that great cloud of witness for me that I saw them go through things, but yet still trusted that God would see them through. And I go, man, your faith was so strong that I saw you get through this. Does that mean they were perfect? No. But it showed that their faith was so strong that even in the heart Hard times, good times, whatever's going on, their faith led them to do some great things for God. And verse 3 says, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Part of our understanding in faith is that God is God. There wasn't something that made God. God is God, creator of everything. One of the hardest things to get to is uh, the first verse of the Bible in the beginning, God. Okay. Before there was anything, there was God. God put things into place. It is by faith that we trust that he is our God, that he is the creator of everything, that he made what is now seen out of what was never seen before. And then he goes into this. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was committed as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. I love this verse. One, we don't hear a lot about Abel except for he gave a good gift and his brother killed him. That's kind of what we know. But Hebrews was written way after this happened. And I love that he says, and Abel still speaks even though he's dead. His faith and what he did and what he showed us is still speaking today. Your legacy of your faith will also continue on, hopefully, after you are gone. It says, By faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Yeah, I'm not going to stop us in all of it, but I have to stop us in some. There's a really important line in that last scripture that I want us to focus on that you might not have before. So we talk about by faith, there's some impossible things that are made possible. There, with, with, if you don't have faith, you can't please God. And then it goes on to say, but if you believe that he exists, he rewards those who do what? Who earnestly seek him. Do you know that when you seek after something, like when you pursue it, when you strive to learn more about it, you really start to understand things a little bit better? I used that relationship thing before. Uh, if you were a guy in here who really had to struggle to make sure that your wife would marry you because you probably married up, you know what this means. You earnestly saw that. I'm sure Mike really worked hard to make sure Molly would marry him. Like, really tried. Probably still is trying as well, like, like a lot of people. <laughs> We, we seek something out because we want to know them more. We want to understand them more. We want to be in deep relationship with them so that when we are going through things, we know each other. We know where we stand. Imagine what that looks like for you. If you are earnestly seeking out God in your life, how much more your understanding and trust and hope will be built in Him. And He also rewards you for that. What does that look like for you? For, for Enoch, he didn't die. Well, that's kind of cool. That's a pretty cool gift. Um, by faith, Noah warned, was warned about things not yet seen. In holy fear, he built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness that is keeping with the faith. You know these stories. We can go through all, a whole bunch of them. By faith, Abraham was called to a place that he would later receive as his inheritance. He obeyed and went, even though he didn't know where he was going. By faith, he made a home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him in the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city of foundations, whose architect and builder is God. 
And then it goes on, right? We see so many more. If you keep reading that, you'll be like, by faith this happened, by faith this person did this. There are so many times that we can see through God's word of how he rewarded people who had deep faith and trust in God. Faith is being able to step out, not knowing what might be coming, but you trust that God is calling you to these places and you're going to work towards where he's leading you. We see Peter running out, walking on water. His faith got him there, but he also struggled and looked when the waves started getting a little rough, took his eyes off of Jesus and fell. It's not always a perfect science, but when we keep striving and looking towards what is getting us there, God rewards those who have great faith in him. Now, this is where it gets a little bit challenging. This is what I want us to, to really lean into today. In the second chapter of James, James starts to challenge us on faith and actions. And he uses some words that might sound a little bit harsh. And so I want us to look into that. I want us to talk about it, uh, about what faith in action looks like when we are serving God. In verse 17 of chapter 2, it says, you see, <laughs> So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Hey, if anybody comes in in the middle of a chapter, go home today and read the rest of this. For time's sake, I'm going to jump us to verse 17. But go home, read the rest of this chapter. So, so you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. Wow, wait a second. Last week, we just talked about that if you believe, you get salvation. Now we're talking about Belief by itself is dead unless it produces something? That sounds like a lot of works. Okay, I want us to backpedal. We can't work our way to heaven, but there is a combination of what faith looks like. And faith looks like if I truly believe in God, it should be producing some fruit in my life. Because faith in God calls me to do things with my life that lead people to understanding that I am a child of God. So now it says, now some may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. This is where it gets a little bit condescending. I don't want it to sound that way. But let's listen to James. Good for you. Even the demons believe this. And they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless. Okay, we can look at stories for this, and I know you know this. Do you remember when Jesus casted out all those legion of demons into the pigs? Do you know that they called him, that, like they knew that he was the Messiah before he even casted them out and they were demons? So people know, even demons know that there is a God. Believing in something and knowing something is good, but what are you doing with it? Your faith should lead people to knowing that you are of God, that you are his child by the way that you love people, the way that you talk and act, the way that you are living your life. Have you grown from who you were to where you are now by being more patient, more loving, more kind? Are we allowing ourselves to really develop these skills and fruits that God has for us through our belief? Or are we just saying, yeah, I'm a Christian, and I go about doing the same thing that I've continued to do since before I even knew who God was. And it is a challenge, and it is really difficult, because what the world tries to offer you, keep you the same, is that you can ride the fence of being, knowing who God is, and living the way that you want to live because it's comfortable. So if I know God, and I know that he calls me for something, and I say, yes, I believe in that, but I continue to live on this side of things and just do what I want to do all the time. Am I really showing that I have a deep faith and understanding who God is? doesn't sound like I fear him much at all because I'm doing the exact opposite of what he's calling me to do and yet telling everybody else that I'm a Christian. <laughs> what that looks like and is seen by the world is those guys don't do anything different than us. Why would we even care to be a Christian? God calls us a little bit more. James actually calls us. Foolish. Wait a second. Grayson, click me back on the screen so I can click me for um. <laughs> Or click me for One of the two. Thank you. Don't you remember that your ancestor Abraham was shown to be the right, to be right with God and his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions work together. 
His actions made his faith complete. And so it happened just as scriptures say, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He even called him a friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Okay, so much to read and so much to be challenged by, but I want us to look at it more by taking a step back. And I want you to think about uh, when I work with kids in schools that really struggle, I look at them and say, do you know what you're doing right now? And they look at me like I'm some weird old guy, and it's okay. They say, everything that you do, you're building a reputation for yourself. And I believe that you're a great kid. And, and most of the time, you probably try to do the right thing. But however, when you show up here, you keep finding yourself getting in trouble. And so now people aren't giving you the benefit of the doubt because they just think that that's who you are now. Because that's the reputation that you made for yourself. Now I start to think back for that for me as a Christian. And if I call myself a Christian and people know that I'm one, and when they look and see how I'm living my life, does it reflect that? Is the reputation that I'm building what God has called for me or who he had me to be, is it reflecting what I say I believe in? If I believe that God is good and calls me to be a forgiving person, to show mercy, to show love, be patient and kind, am I doing those things with my life? And to be honest, and I can say this pretty confidently, I don't all the time. I struggle with it. But if I look at Gavin of now versus of when I was a kid, I'm making progress, seeking him out. I'm trying to pursue him so that my life could be more of a reflection of who he is. If you look at this example that he uses with Abraham, Abraham was called to go somewhere else and he trusted that in God. So he goes. Abraham made some mistakes along the way. He just did. He thought he knew the right way out of certain situations and he did it to really displeased God. And he had some conversations. He was waiting and hoping for a child. It took a very long time. And the moment he gets one and it becomes of age, God tells him, now I want you to sacrifice that kid that I promised you. And on this journey, you would think he would say, God, that is dumb. I'm not going to do that. I trusted you this far, and now you're leading me to something that doesn't make sense. I don't want to do that. But Abraham did something different. He got to a point in his life where he might have questioned it before and tried to do his own thing like he did earlier. But instead, he says, you know what, God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do what you asked me to do. And God blesses him. But the nation that he promised Abraham starts to come out of his son Isaac and Jacob. And they build something that was promised to them because he was faithful to God. And God shows us in his scriptures that when we are faithful to him, he blesses us for generations. But that doesn't come out of just a word of belief. It also comes with a showing through the way that we're living our lives that he is our God and that we are his children. This is a difficult thing. And one of the things that's going to help us to get here as we move forward is learning where repentance fits in with this. When we go into next week, we're going to go from our belief to understanding that when we make mistakes, does that take away from how God views us and sees us? And I think a lot of times our belief gets shattered because we feel like if we're not doing enough or we're not good enough, then God won't love us like we think he should. And this is going to be a myth that we're going to come and talk about next week. So I want you to think about when you go home today, give me some homework. I want you to look at, and I'm going to ask. I will ask for hands. Just kidding, because I want you to show up. This room is giving. But maybe if you feel so confident to do this, I want you to go home and look up. What does it mean to be to have a repentant heart for God? How does God view us as his children when we come to him with repentant hearts? And how does that fit with our faith? I want you just to take that as a challenge to go home and read some things. And if you come, and I'll be like, so... Anybody, tell me what you thought about this. Anybody who raised their hand, I will give you a prize. I'll give you a prize tomorrow, tomorrow, next week. So come ready to get a prize. For anybody who does work, I'm going to pull out my teacher hat. I'm going to throw stuff at you if you have answers for me. But this time, I want you to think about it for us. We're going to lead today with our challenge. How are my actions matching up with what I say I believe in? If you're going to say something and you do the opposite, am I going to trust who you are anymore? And I want us to think about that with our view of God. If I am saying that I am a faithful Christian, that I believe that Jesus is my Savior, is my actions, are they, matching up with this belief that I have? And if they aren't, what am I doing to work on that? 
What am I doing to get myself pursuing God and to be closer to him so that not just that other people will see me as a follower of Christ, but that I will know and have confidence that what I believe in is true, that it leads me to actions that are true and trustworthy and good. Let's go to God in prayer. We'll have a song of invitation after this as we lead it to the rest of our day. Dear Father, Lord, we are so grateful that you love us even when we struggle through understanding where we fit in this world and with you. God, I pray as we navigate this world that is so difficult because of what sin is doing within us and within others, God, that we lean and trust that you are God. You are the creator of everything. And that as we accept you into our lives, that you call us to more. And God, I pray that our actions start to show the fruit of what it means to be your children. And God, I pray that we can be a more loving group, that we can start changing this world that, of what we want to see in heaven, that we can start seeing here because of the love that we have for others, the patience we, we show, the kindness that we have. God, I just pray that you help us to live those lives that, that are of good, that you have planned for us to do long before we were ever made. And we can fully see that when we trust in you and know that those actions come from you as a gift. God, I pray that we live lives that are just worthy of your calling, but also that are showing how beautiful you are and how forgiving you are, and how loving you are through the lives that we get to live, God. And we're so grateful for that gift and for your son, praise in his name. Amen. At this time, we're going to do a song of invitation. If you're outside of Christ, when taking a baptism, we'd love uh, for that to happen for you. If you have any prayer concerns or needs, we'd love to pray over you. Amen.